Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions on faith and life, and I do my best to give a biblical perspective. Well, today's questions are a good one. Uh, they're all good, but um, this is not something I had really ever thought about outside of my um, post-grad studies in, in systematic theology. So, so yeah, here we go. Uh, when does art become a graven image, and when does viewing such images become an act of idolatry or worship? In other words, what's the difference between religious art and, and icons? I think, you know, when we think of graven images, we're thinking of, of um, religious artifacts of icons, particularly, I think. Uh, so so I, think, I think the to really sort of work out where the line is between religious art and, and iconography and all those sorts of things, when is it acceptable and when have we crossed over into um, idolatry? Um, I think you need to understand the difference between religious art or art and um, and iconography, for example. Um, essentially, art in this context, let's say religious art, is, is meant to be um, an object of inspiration, an object that stirs the imagination, uh, an object that, that captures your thoughts and gets you to think about, uh, about a biblical text, a biblical um, a a biblical scene, for um, so to speak. I think, for example, of Rembrandt's religious art, which is classic. Um, so you have some of his, for example, you have Moses breaking the stone tablets when he came down and saw the idolatry that was unfolding. And so when you look at the picture, you can imagine yourself there. You can imagine his frustration and his anger and, and all those sorts of things. Or I think of his um, Jesus raising Lazarus, for example. And, and again, you can imagine yourself um, through that art, because he's such a, an incredible artist, being drawn into, and you you can imagine the emotions there, or, or his um, painting of the return of the prodigal son. Once more, you can just the way he he depicts biblical scenes. You're drawn in, and you you sort of can, you're drawn into the narrative um, through the art, and you imagine it. So, uh, but you're not venerating the art. It's sort of like a a doorway to to engage with the text. Uh, and, and so it's just an object that's meant to be observed, whereas icons um, are, are meant to be, they're, they're really meant to be venerated uh, in, in many, many ways. Um, so you go into um, churches where, so maybe people bow down before them, um, they, they pray to them, they kiss them, they touch them and everything else. And, they, and they've now become the act, uh, they, they've become an object of worship. Um, rather than a means of um, engaging with worship. Uh, think, for example, if I could illustrate it this way, um, we would venerate the scriptures in terms of saying that the scriptures uh, help us understand the nature and character of God and what it means to follow after him. So it points us to God. But that's different from worshipping the scriptures in and of themselves and, and just and worshipping the Bible. Um, and that's sort of like the difference between art and icons. One is being worshipped for itself. The other is seen as an object to draw us into, a, into our relationship with, with God and, and the scriptures. Um, it's interesting to note that the early icons, um, there was two distinguishing features. One was that they had no shadows because they were depicting spiritual realities and they weren't meant to be venerated in and of themselves. Um, and the second was that they were drawn to a vanishing perspective because they were sort of like a window that you were to, that was sort of drawing you through itself into, uh, into God. And, and the reason for that is that they were used to sort of help engage people with the scriptures, with faith, as a almost as a um, as a mechanism for teaching, because many people were illiterate, so the pictures were, were meant to depict biblical scenes, and, and on it goes. But but of course um, they moved on from there very quickly, and they began venerating them, worshiping them. A lot of them become just very simple two dimensional um, pictures, and and all those sorts of things. And and I do think that has crossed the line. It's now uh, a graven image, and it, it reached that sort of the debate around where is that line sort of reached its height in the um, 700s where because people were using them as objects of worship um, they, they were they were banned um, the emperor of Constantinople um, it would be a Leo I'm guessing in the 700s um, second or third something like that um, maybe later um, but anyway, he, he banned them because the, the, he saw them as idolatrous. Um, they were graven images and therefore they should be thrown out. And that hard line was 
was continued with the reformers as well, um, who, who saw them as as graven images, who saw them their use as idolatrous, um, and and on it goes. So, in answer to your question, when does art become a graven image? Um, when when the the piece itself is worshipped, as opposed um, to just seeing it as a means to to draw you past itself into the world that it's depicting uh, in this context, scripture. Uh, when when that you're supposed to stop at that at that piece of art, it's a graven image, um, and it's an act of idolatry to engage with it as opposed um, to worship. Uh, and it's a very real debate; it still continues today. Um, I know that um, oh, quite some time ago, when I say quite some time ago, eight hundred years ago, perhaps. I, I know that the um, the Orthodox Church said that you could not you could not be Orthodox and not embrace icons um, because they saw them as so integral to to worship because the way that you interacted with them and everything else and and you know and I think that's idolatrous I don't think that's that's worship but that that sort of debate still goes on there are still people who say we shouldn't have crosses in churches because they're idolatrous that they're, they're graven images and I guess that's something that we need to to wrestle with for ourselves in terms of where is that line but but in terms of the question that's how I would see it love to hear your thoughts below um, but hey if you've got questions about faith and life jump over to slider.com use the hashtag ask Hamish love to hear from you but that's it for now. Until next time, God bless.